Mikey for his fine remarks. And thank John for his introduction. And thank all of you, not only for being out today, but for week after week, year after year, engaging in the fight for social and economic justice. So thank you all very much. coming back to your beautiful state because it reminds me very much of my beautiful state. Uh, and you should be very proud that you have the second best cheddar cheese in the Let me begin uh, by kind of telling you a little bit of some stuff that you may not see on TV or see in the newspapers. So let me begin by kind of telling you the way I see the current political dynamic. And I want to start off by reading from a document of the 1980 Libertarian Party where a candidate for vice president on that party was one David Koch. Half of the Koch brothers. And the most important point that I think we can make about contemporary politics is to understand how extraordinarily successful the Koch brothers have been in converting the American political scene to the right. Some of you may remember people like Dwight David Eisenhower. And in my state, we had a whole list of moderate Republicans who actually were concerned about the environment, education, women's rights. They didn't have our politics, but they had deep concerns about the welfare of ordinary people. Now what I want to read you is a document from 1980, and then you will understand how far the Republican Party has moved to the right. Okay? I'm going to read exact quotes from the platform that David Koch ran on. Now, running as a Libertarian Party candidate in that election, it's not just that he received 1% of the vote, it's that many of the ideas that he expounded in that campaign were thought to be crazy, wacky, fringe ideas. But listen to how those ideas reflect today mainstream Republican thinking. This is a quote right from their platform. Quote, we urge the repeal of federal campaign finance laws and the immediate abolition of the despotic Federal Election Commission, end of quote. Right now, as you know, because of the efforts of the Republican Party, the Koch brothers and others, the Supreme Court gave us a disastrous 5-4 to four decision on Citizens United, one of the worst decisions in the history of the United States of America. says corporations are people and that corporations and wealthy people can spend as much money as they want on independent expenditures. For the Koch brothers and today the leadership of the Republican Party, you have to understand that does not go far enough. They want, and this is what Koch was talking about 35 years ago, they want billionaires to be able to directly hand checks of $50 million to the candidates of their choice. That is now the position of the top of the Republican Party. So you are, will be, if this happens, in a situation where the Koch brothers could sit in a room, give candidates $50 million, give candidates $100 million, give them their script, give them their think tanks, and that is what their vision is of the politics of the future. Here's also, all right, here is also what they talked about back then and what they believe today. You know, it's a rape debate in Washington. Should we expand Medicare? Cut that da, da, da. This is their view, quote, we favor the abolition of Medicare and Medicaid programs. These are the guys who are now spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars 
to elect candidates who will work for their interests. I quote, we favor the repeal of the fraudulent, virtually bankrupt, and increasingly oppressive social security system. What is my point? My point is, if you look at the riot budget in the House of Representatives, they didn't abolish Medicare, but they certainly wanted to end Medicare as we know it, and they made massive cuts in Medicaid, and under Bush, there was, in fact, an effort to privatize Social Security. And pay attention. In the papers today, the Republicans in the Senate are now talking about what their agenda will be if, God forbid, they gain control of the Senate. Oh. And they're back again to talking about entitlement reform. And when they talk about entitlement reform, know exactly what they are talking about. Massive cuts in Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and we will not allow them to do that. <laughs> Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid, not enough. Quote, we propose the abolition of the governmental postal service. That's an issue, boy, I have been engaged in for years right now. And let me just say one word. I know we got some postal workers here. All right, and I'll them. Despite what you read on the papers every three months, the truth is the Postal Service this year excluded this horrendous $5.5 billion prepayment for future health care retirees is actually making money. We got it. that right now the federal minimum wage of seven and a quarter is a starvation wage. Right. And I hope all of us are united in raising the minimum wage to a living wage. <laughs> but I want you to hear what the Koch brothers view is on the minimum wage. And I quote, we support repeal of all law which impede the ability of any person to find employment such as minimum wage laws. End of quote. Do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. What that means is that in high unemployment areas, their vision is that employers will be able to say to workers, I don't have to pay you a minimum wage. I'm going to pay you three bucks an hour, and if you don't like that, there are 30 other workers who will take that job. No minimum wage, no worker safety protection on the job. That's their vision. Let me read your furthermore. I know Mike was talking about education. Let me talk, tell you what the Koch brothers' view is on education. And I quote, and it's important to hear this. Because, you know, the media occasionally will write, well, yeah, it's true, the Koch brothers spend a whole lot of money. But nobody is writing about what these right-wing extremists believe. And we've got to get the word out. I quote, we advocate the complete separation of education and state. Government schools lead to the indoctrination of children and interfere with the free choice of individuals. Government ownership, operation, regulation, and subsidy of schools and colleges should be ended. End of quote. Well, very succinctly stated, that's the end of public education in America. Right. So if you got the money, yeah, you can send your kids to find private schools, but if you don't have the money, tough luck. Goodbye, as I read this, state universities. Goodbye, Pell Grants, all gone. Quotes, and this should not surprise us coming from...